Good morning, uh, physical science students. Today is week 12. So we're starting week 12 in here. And this brief introduction for this week is going to be here. Uh, this is week 12. Remember week 11, we started the first half of uh, light. This is the second half of light so that deals mainly with the uh, color and our perception of color, number one. And number two also deals with something called the polarization of light. One of the things we learned from week 11 is light is the vibration of the electric field and the magnetic field, and they both propagate in a direction that is perpendicular on their direction of vibrations. Namely, the electric field could be going up and down, for example, this way, but the light itself is traveling in this direction. In that sense, then the magnetic field will be going in and out. So they are forming like a triangle. But in general, this is not the case. I mean, in general, the, uh, the electric field could be pointing in any direction that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. At the same time, it's like, like uh, trying to do it like this. So think of it that this is one of them is the electric field and one of them is the magnetic field, but both of them are traveling in a direction that is perpendicular to them. So, but they can actually spin one way or the other, okay? So the direction of the electric field is what I mean by polarization. If I, if I take that direction and fix it somehow by running this thing through a polarizer, Polarizers are like the glasses that are used by people who drive in the evening or in the morning where the sun is hitting very low and light is coming in all direction and basically gives you a fuzzy direction in front of you. But when you use a polarizer, it makes the picture clearer because then the polarizer will focus only one of the lights and then all of a sudden, the direction looks a little bit better. So they have applications. So that's what I mean by polarization. You cannot polarize sound because sound goes in a spherical shape and uh, it's 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 a compressional wave. <laughs> if you if you polarize it in the compression the direction, you can kill it. Basically, there is no more sound that is going to propagate. But for the electric field, for the light, I'm sorry, you can because it's traveling in a direction that is perpendicular to where it's oscillating. So you can pick a direction. That is what we mean by polarization. So let me share with you the screen. to see week 12 in its full glory. Again, we have the objectives, we have the content from this week that I'm going to talk briefly about. We have the discussion, which you're going to see is slightly different this time around in a sense, the prompt is basically given there where you're going to just put a summary of all of the concepts that are learned from this week. So you don't need to watch the recording if you wish to. Uh, and then we have the PowerPoint, the typical stuff. And then we have a homework. All of the problems, I think there are seven problems. They were discussed in detail in the previous recording. So I urge you guys to go and watch that recording to see how the problems are solved. With the exception of the last problem, and that is because it deals with the polarization. So again, watch the recording in there. We're going to briefly talk about the last problem and you should be ready for the homework. Should you have any difficulty with the homework, please let me know. And then I have a survey here. The purpose of this survey is to tell me how the course is progressing with you and what we need to do to make it better. Okay, what are the things that we think we should really keep on doing and the things that probably need to change. One of the things that probably are going to be changing is the amount of the recordings. I'm going to try to keep this recording short recording, okay? Anyway, uh, so again, the objectives, let me click on them. So we have two discussions that are in here. Don't forget them, we have the homework and we also, the, the reason why you have two weeks together is because it's only one concept. It deals with light really, okay? And then we have the progress report that I mentioned before. So let me go into, and the concepts there, the second half of light, that's why you see only a slightly three number of objectives in here. They all deal with the color and how light travels in different media and the law of dispersion. And that gives me what is known as, or at least some of phenomenon that we know, for example, uh, rainbows. Okay, and then uh, the polarization that I mentioned in the beginning. So let me go into the content. 
because that's where the things are happening. Again, this is just a brief reminder from the previous week that light that we're talking about, the one that is perceived by our eyes, is really falls in a band that is narrow compared to the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So usually when we talk about light, we talk about visible light, what our eyes are sensitive to. So this is what we mean by it. Light, as it goes through different media, uh, uh, can be absorbed entirely or partly. For the most part, materials, they are reflective, except for certain frequencies, and hence you see that perceptive color, okay? The lack of one color gives this material a specific shade of color. And if it emits back that color and absorbs everything, it's going to be that specific color depending on which direction you're looking at it again. So this is in a nutshell how light is. Again, our eyes, they have three basic uh, sensors, okay? They have three receptors, cones actually in the eye. Some of them are receptive to low frequency, long wavelength. So this they must be longer in a sense, and they, uh, they, 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 they interpret any frequency anytime they are basically triggered as red. Then you have a medium size cones and those they interpret any light that you see as being green. And then you have a third type, which is the, uh, the, the uh, shorter ones. And those are, they interpret anything they see as blue. If they're all triggered with the same amount, the color will be white. If they're triggered with a different base uh, intensities case, <laughs> excuse me, it's the com combination of the RGB, the red, green, and uh, blue uh, frequencies, which the eye or the brain at least itself gives it that perception of different colors. So this is how the sensory system of our own eyes work basically. So that's, that's what we see. That's one of these three frequencies that are basically we're sensitive to. Depending on the person, your sensitivity to the red could shift toward lower part of the red or higher part of the red, and same thing for the other colors. That's typical for different people. So my interpretation of the red might be different than your interpretation of the red, but it's more or less in the same range, okay? In other words, you're not gonna see red as blue. So that's not gonna happen. But that's basically, unless a person, of course, is colorblind, which is another problem altogether. But then in that case, they have different sensitivity to different kinds of shade of color. So unless, okay, that's a different topic by itself, but uh, the, the, the opposites of the colors are in here indicated, again, just by looking at how they combine, then you can find different colors that are not there in the spectrum, including, for example, the white light or the blue lights and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the properties that I mentioned in here is how light travels in different media. Light slows down in a different medium because it's absorbed by an atom and then re-emitted by that atom, travels between the atoms, is absorbed by another atom or molecule, not necessarily an atom, depending on the frequency which one is triggered. Uh, during the time it's transitioning between those two, it's actually traveling with the speed of light, but there is an amount of time where it's absorbed. So it slows down overall in the medium. And this is how the expression for the, uh, for the speed of light, it's slower, less than the speed of light actually in a medium, it's less than the speed of light in vacuum where C is the speed of light in vacuum. Uh, N is the index of refraction, which is usually greater than one. It's always more than one, which means that light travels with a speed less than C, which is the speed in the air or in the vacuum. And uh, the index of refraction itself depends on the wavelength. In other words, a white light, when it hits, for example, a material, in this case, glass, it breaks down depending on the wavelength. The longer wavelength will continue, and that's the red, and the shorter wavelength, uh, 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 when they refract, they refract at a higher angle. In other words, they, they set the color separated. Here is white where all the colors are, and now they are separated. And this is what the prism is, basically. It breaks down the different components of light. Same thing, for example, with a droplet of water in the air. Uh, it does the same thing, because the index of refraction for the air in this, for the water in this case is more than one, which means that light slows down, but depending on the frequency, light is separated, and that's how rainbows form. Again, I mentioned briefly the fact that light is not polarized in a specific direction in general, but rather polarized in all kinds of directions. And depending if I run it through a polarizer, I'm going to pick up a component. 
Here is where the problem is for the last problem of the homework. Light in this case is actually on a plane traveling in one direction. So yeah, it's a three dimension, but the electric field and the magnetic field, they form a plane. And that plane light can be polarized in each direction, in whatever direction. It could be circularly polarized, could be polarized not necessarily in a circle. It could be polarized in a given direction and so on and so forth. In general, any vector on a plane has two components and two components only. So if for some reason, I pick up this amount of intensity, half of it must be in here. The other half is in all of the other directions. So that's exactly what this experiment is. First of all, in here, she put the two polarizers in the same direction. So in this case, you can clearly see her face from behind it, okay? But if she puts it at a 90 degree angle, meaning that she cuts this component and then she cuts the other component, that's it. The vector can really have two components. If you kill one of them and then kill the other, you end up with nothing, you end up with zero. That's why you don't see her face in here. But if you put the three of them at certain angle, you orient one in here, one in here, for example, that's polarized this way, and then you orient the other one in here, and then you orient the other one in here. If you leave the, if you remove the middle one, you're gonna have a zero component. Because remember, if you remove the middle one, the one she was, she was holding in the middle, you're gonna be back into this picture again, which is a dark picture, okay? But if you put the middle, so basically you're dealing with this expression. That is the intensity that is polarized coming from the final polarizer is usually proportional to the initial intensity times the cosine of the angle between them. When they're at 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That's why they cancel out in this case. When you square zero is zero. But when they are at 45 degrees, 45 degrees cosine of 45 degrees is one half and another 45 degrees cosine of 45 degrees, that's another half. So you end up with the end with the one half times one half, which is a quarter. So that's why you can see her, okay? This is part of the problem that you have. Actually, the problem is a lot less than that because you're gonna end up with 50% and 50% in the other direction. When you polarize in a specific direction, you only end up with 50% and the other 50% is there. I'm talking in briefly in here about the problem. And this is basically in a nutshell what the content is. So let me go into the homework specifically in here because I wanna make sure that you guys understand that. And I want to keep this recording short. Because that's the last problem we did not discuss last time. So here is a problem. When light strikes a glass perpendicularly, about 4% of the light is reflected at each surface. So light is coming and hits a glass, 4% is reflected. Show that the amount of light transmitted through a pane of window of glass is 92%. So again, 4% is reflected. That means that uh, in one direction, that means 4% is also reflected in the other direction, which amounts to 8% altogether, which means 92% is, tra is transmitted. Again, just by using the formula that I was talking about in that for the polarization in this case, it's 4% in specific direction. So it's for reflected the perpendicularly in the perpendicular direction. That means 4% is reflected in the rest of the directions because Again, 4% this way and 4% this way, that's 8% because a vector can only be broken down into two components. Since you took 4% in one direction, that means 4% of the other directions. So 4% plus 4%, that's 8%. How much is left to go on the other side? It's 92%. So that's the only thing that is left from last time. And uh, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. So this is in a nutshell the entire week. Again, I'm, I did not go in detail because I'm expecting that you guys read these things and do the homework. If you have difficulty, please let me know so that we can discuss them in a private session. And if that private session benefits everybody, I would be more than willing to record it and share it with everybody else or send a message to everybody else if in case we don't report it. Thank you.